Hi, welcome back. In the previous lecture, we have studied about four joint link parameters that are link length AI, link twist alpha I, joint distance DI, and joint angle theta I. If you have not gone through lecture number 10, I would suggest you to go to the lecture number 10 and then come back to this lecture. Now, in this lecture, we will study about DH notation. Denovit and Hartenberg given the definition of manipulator with these four joint link parameters. And they also gave a systematic procedure for assigning a right-handed coordinate frame to each link. This is known as denovit hartenberg notation or DH notation. So here we will study a set of rules to assign a coordinate frame to distal end of each link. Now we know that the first link that is the link 0 and the last link that is link n are connected to only one other link that is link 0 is connected to link 1 and link n is connected to link n minus 1 only. So they have more randomness that is the first link and last link have more arbitrariness. Therefore the first and the last frames are assigned after assigning frames to intermediate links that is link 1 and link n minus 1. Okay. Now, the displacement of each joint link is measured with respect to the frame. That is, we will measure the displacement with respect to the assigned frames. These frames are assigned imagining the manipulator in the home position. So, before assigning these frames, the home position of the manipulator must be decided. Now, the question arises how to decide this home position of the manipulator. Remember this. For a revolute joint, the zero position is when the joint angle theta i is zero. For a revolute joint, the zero position is when the joint angle theta is zero. And for the prismatic joint, the zero position is when the joint displacement di is least or minimal. Okay, when all the joints are in zero position, the manipulator is said, said to be in home position. So before assigning these frames, this home position of the manipulator, that is when all the joints are in zero position must be decided. Now coming back to frame assignment, we will learn some steps over here. In step zero, identify and number the joints and lengths as discussed in the previous lectures as how to number the joints and lengths that is link zero, link one, link two up to link n. After numbering, the next step is to assign z-axis. The z-axis is aligned with the joint axis as shown over here. zi is aligned with the joint axis i, zi minus 1 with joint axis i minus 1 and similarly zi minus 2 with axis i minus 2. In the step number 2, we will fix xi and origin. The xi axis is fixed perpendicular to both the zi and zi minus 1 as shown in the diagram x1 is perpendicular to z0 and z1 and origin is located at intersection of zi and xi axis. Now here we have three possible cases. Case number one when zi and zi minus 1 intersect. As shown in the diagram z1 and z0 are intersecting. In this case choose the origin at the point of their intersection. Case number 2 when zi and zi minus 1 are parallel as shown over here. Now when the joint is revolute, zi is chosen along the common normal passing through origin of the frame i minus 1. This will make di is equal to 0. And when the joint is prismatic, that is xi is chosen along any convenient normal. In the case number 3, we have zi and zi minus 1 to coincide with each other. Now, when the joint is revolute, origin is located to coincide with the origin of the frame i minus 1 and xi minus 1 and xi axis coincide. This will also make di equal to 0. Now, when the joint is prismatic, xi is chosen as any convenient common normal and origin is located at the distal end of link i as shown in the diagram. Now up to here we have fixed zi and xi axis. We will now move to step number 3. 
the y axis has no choice and is fixed to complete the right handed orthogonal coordinate frame in step number 4 we will assign frame 0 frame 0 location is arbitrary its location is based on the simplification of the model and it depends upon the type of the joint 1 if the joint is prismatic x0 and x1 axis are made parallel this will make theta 1 equal to 0 and if the joint is revolute origin can be chosen arbitrarily that is the origin is chosen such that it will make d1 equal to 0 or equal to some constant value okay moving further to step number 5 the origin of the frame n is chosen at the tip of manipulator this point is called tool point and frame n is called the tool frame zn axis is fixed along the direction of zn minus 1 axis pointing away from the link n if the joint n is prismatic xn is taken parallel to xn minus 1 but if the joint n is revolute then xn is perpendicular to both zn minus 1 and zn the yn axis is chosen to complete the right handed orthogonal frame n so in the above seven steps all the frames are fixed now remember it is desirable to make as many of joint length parameters as possible equal to zero as this will make our calculation of kinematic model easier in the next lecture we will identify the joint length parameters for each length using which the direct kinematic model will be developed